Behind British Rail, behind the wide range of trains operated, is a broad base of engineering skills. BREL, British Rail Engineering Limited, provides that base. BREL is a separate but wholly owned subsidiary of British Rail. It's responsible for the construction and repair of the vast majority of BR's fleets of locomotives, carriages and wagons. BREL also builds locomotives and vehicles for customers abroad. These carriages were run on the meter gauge lines of Tanzania. The company employs some 35,000 people, a large number of them skilled technicians and craftsmen. For its management team, BREL is looking increasingly to graduates. For the company is not only founded on engineering skills, it is run by engineers. And it's one of the biggest engineering concerns in Britain. One of the 13 major works is Horridge in Lancashire. And its works manager is a graduate, Chris Shepherd. This is his second appointment at Horridge. When I first came to Horridge in the early 70s, the future of the works was in some doubt. And as a result of this, the plant was somewhat out of date. I was development engineer at the time, and I was responsible for planning, estimating, the drawing office, work study, and also investment. And it was investment which, in fact, was the key area for the works because the future, it was decided, was going to be uh, more secure and new plant was needed. And at that time, I developed with my staff schemes of the order of £5 million to cover a five-year period. Since I've been back, there's also been the need to change the wagon repair shop to a carriage shop. And in fact, I've now uh, developed a scheme of something like one and a half million pound and we're in the process of modernizing that part of the works. These carriages are from electric multiple units, EMUs for short. They work on southern regions commuter routes into London. The refurbishing programme, which Chris Shepherd has helped to initiate, should extend their working life by at least another ten years. How did Chris Shepherd come to join BREL? After applying to several firms, I decided that the BREL training scheme was very well structured. It gave quite a good range of experience and also they seemed to be very interested in developing graduates into engineers and managers. Graduates can enter BREL either direct from university or be sponsored as school leavers on engineering studentship schemes. Whichever route they choose, entrants will first undergo two years of practical training. All the way around. All the way around. There's your minus. Now that's the one. Here, a group is involved in learning basic workshop practice, a three-month part of their course. You've got a tendency here at this stage, I think. For six months, they'll then be on a workshop floor, working alongside men they may well be managing in the years to come. Another three-month period will be spent in design appreciation work. In the last two decades, BREL has won a worldwide reputation for its design and technological development. Another few months will be spent at an operating depot. This two years of training can come either after graduation or as part of the degree course, in different varieties of sandwich. Whichever they opt for, Entrants will be encouraged to talk about their experiences with their training officer. Going back to the beginning of your first year of your training, how did you react to your first introduction to workshops? This was great training into 
in getting to know people very quickly because the object while you're in the shop was to approach as many people as possible and learn about them and learn about their job. And I found that as long as I showed interest in the person as well as what he was doing, then the person was very, very willing to show me what he was doing and all the problems he came across and his attitudes on management and the work in general, which um, was very, very rewarding indeed. You can be a, uh, a great nuisance to people, uh, even, if, even with the best of intentions or when you're doing your best because you don't have the necessary practical skill and you come around asking questions. But both the management and the workforce, in my case, were uh, very helpful. Having come from school, which is a, a public school, you live a very narrow in a very narrow environment. And to come into something, you know, it's in a sense the big wide world, to come into that and to get an appreciation of it and to find that you slot into it nicely is um, a wonderful experience. Anne, how did you find it as a girl coming in? Um, I think most, after the sort of first half hour of sitting there staring at me, sort of trying to work out whether I was actually human or not, they generally got used to the idea that I was there and just treated me like a normal human being. Some of them would say, it's very unusual to see a girl in engineering, but I don't suppose you're ever going to use it, are you? Or, you know, I mean, you won't be able to do as good a job as the blokes. And it's sort of, you'd sort of sit there trying to be tactful and explain to them, yes, you were going to be able to do as good a job as the blokes. But uh, I think they generally got used to the idea and sort of found that I wasn't quite the delicate little beast that they thought I was and uh, found that I was actually able to carry things around and get dirty without sort of fainting or anything like that. What about your communications with the people on the shop floor during your training? The more you do, the better you'll get on generally. There is no point standing there watching somebody all day. Yeah. You want to go and find someone who you can persuade to let you get stuck in and do the job. Whether you make a mess of it or not isn't desperately important um, because they won't give you a job that is that vital. That is the biggest help to getting on with the people as well as being the biggest help to learning about the engineering.